Hi, welcome back to the Harry Fisher Gardener channel. My name's Aaron. In this video today, I'm going to take you on a short tour through the rose room. There's a lot of new things that are coming to bloom since I did my last video. And I've also managed to complete all of the rose ring supports and the um, plant netting support, which I'll show you shortly. I'd like to also show you the roses that I've got planted in their companion clematis in this top half of the room, which I've not yet videoed on this channel. So that's all to come shortly. Hope you enjoy the video. I'm gonna quickly take you around the um, top half of the rose room. These are the ones that I've already done videos of, just to show you some of the stuff that's now blooming. I think in the last video I did a lot of the hyacinths were out, which have now gone over and I've actually deadheaded a lot of those. Um, but there are some wonderful stuff that's out at the minute. Just want to let you look at this um, polyantha, which is basically the same as a primrose, except the flowers, instead of um, being single and on their own stems, are sort of held high above the um, foliage, which is underneath. And look at the combination of this one, though. This was planted by complete accident with this Brunera. I didn't realise it was going to be that colour. Um, but with the silver foliage of the Brunera and that lovely crimson red of that polyantha I just think that looks amazing gorgeous I seen it the other day and I thought wow so that's definitely something that I'm going to continue to do moving forward because I really like those colours together um, <clears throat> here we've got the Muscari Mountain Lady which to me looks like little baby hats that have been knitted with a white pom-pom on the top. I think it's really cute. They're absolutely beautiful. The bees really like these as well. You can see the foxgloves have grown a bit since the last video and at the back there we've got the um, forget-me-nots which are in bloom. And if I can get the camera to focus you can see. They're so lovely these flowers. Absolutely beautiful. And just sort of bring you back over to this section we've got some more forget-me-nots there i'm going to try and go quickly through this section and um, this is charles darwin which i've shown you before um, we've got a bit more foliage growth since the last video again and these rings are working really really nice to support these roses if you look um, i've not tied them in at all yet these are just quite literally leaning against and the rose ring actually I have tied that one in most of them I haven't tied in um, but yeah I'm really really pleased looking really good had a look for aphids earlier today I found a few on some of the roses but not very many and I'm not using pesticides insecticides anything like that I'm just coming along and I'm flicking them off with my hand and squishing any that I can find okay and I just want to try and reduce damage to other pollinating insects and hopefully nature will restore the balance but I'm not having much of a problem I know a lot of people at the minute are having problems with aphids anyway moving on from that we've got more forget-me-nots down there look at these tulips these are just going over now some of them are anyway um, I don't know the name of this one I do apologize just a giant red tulip to me but absolutely beautiful love the um, detailing inside the throat you'll have to um, bear with me it's quite a windy day today it's really sunny and quite warm but there is a gentle breeze and so if it's messing up with the audio quality I do apologize um, but there's the tulips are literally just coming out now they've been out I think these ones for about seven to ten days something like that um, you can see there's a lot more coming I think these are probably the same variety looking at the color there um, the alliums have really come on a lot. You can see they're already sending up their blooms, which won't come out for a while yet, but still they look really nice. Nice green colour at the minute. Those leaves will eventually turn as they flower, as all alliums do. But for now, they're absolutely beautiful. I love the colour of their leaves, actually. It's like a bluey green colour. It's just really nice this time of year. Um, I'm not going to go through everything in the beds um, as i done last time otherwise the video will just go on for ages. I just want to show you a few of the key things. 
the Iris um, <clears throat> Siberica throwing up all of um, their stems now they'll get a lot taller maybe two three times the height of that possibly even more um, just a side note as you can see I've got dandelions in the lawn and I've got something known as a lesser calendine um, which is part of the buttercup family it's a wildflower beautiful um, green heart shaped leaves I don't know if you can see that I don't weed my lawn I let as many wildflowers grow in here as possible. The only thing that I will do with those dandelions, um, which are, by the way, a really important source of nectar for foraging insects, such as bumblebees, um, at this time of year in spring. So if you can, leave them. Um, just make sure that, you know, once the flower goes over and it sort of closes up before it opens up again with that classic fairy-like seed head, um, just pull it off and then you won't have them spreading into your flower beds and everywhere else but for now um, I just let them grow we actually use the the flowers the foliage the roots all of it to feed our chickens um, it's just part of an extra thing in their diet and they absolutely love dandelion leaves apparently they're meant to be really good for humans as well but I can't say I've ever tried them so um, I'll leave that one to you guys. Um, so anyway, moving on in this bed, we have um, a tulip here. I think this one is called um, Tulip Upstar. Gorgeous, gorgeous colour. Pale white at the bottom, going into a bubblegum pink at the top. I love the way the light reflects in this tulip. It almost gives it a very eerie quality. A bit like some of the David Austin roses actually. Queen of Sweden's not that that much different to this um, in terms of the colour tones, which is really, really nice anyway. Um, so that is um, Tulip Upstar. We can see we've got some more of that mountain lady at the back there. Some more forget-me-nots. There's a lot of stuff coming through in these borders now, but it's just nice to see different interest, you know, at different times of the year. Um, we've got a lot of the lupins which are foliaging out and looking quite nice. Again, nice shape, nice contrast of shapes in this bed and colours, different greens, strappy leaves, um, sort of uh, silvery leaves that are a bit velvet in texture. You've got the big foxglove leaves, you've got the geraniums with their almost snowflake shaped leaves. You've got the brunera there with the silvering on the top and then of course the lupins which are heavily palmated um, yeah I just think it looks very interesting um, who's this this is Lady of Shalott she's putting out quite a bit of foliage now I pruned these ones quite late so some of your roses in the UK are probably a lot further on than mine um, I'd say I probably got to these maybe two three weeks after i would have ideally liked to get to them but it doesn't matter they'll just flower slightly later which is not an issue only by a few weeks um, the main thing is they've been pruned here we've got tulip parisima which i think looks amazing i don't know what it is about this but i just get white swan that's what comes to my mind i don't know if it's the color of that um, central bit which looks, looks a little bit like swan's feet and then the petals, which obviously look the same colour as the swan. And then maybe the orange, it's part of the markings around the swan eye. Um, you can see some of them have gone over, but there's a lot still there that are absolutely beautiful. I think this is a stunning tulip. This one's caught a leaf inside. Um, just beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous just to have this in April in the rose room you know the roses really are just another companion plant in and amongst lots of other amazing plants this tulip is so good this one is uh, crisper mixed with that texture at the top in combination with the color and the way that they glow in the light and then of course this is a mixed bunch and there are a few more to come through here you can see 
Look at this yellow one. When the camera focuses, you can really see the jagged edges of those petals. That's absolutely stunning. Oh, I just love it. I think when I put these tulips in last year, I thought, oh, they, they, they might be nice. They look nice on the packet. Um, I only purchased them from a local DIY store, they were on offer. And I thought I wanted tulips in this room, so I just bought a load and dotted them throughout the entire room. Had a little bit of an issue with the mice, didn't realise that they like to eat tulip bulbs. I said that in my last video. So I didn't have as many left to do the um, other half of the room, which I'm going to show you. So we're a little bit thinner on the ground with tulips at that side. There's still quite a few. Um, but next year, if I do put any more in, I certainly won't let the mice get them before they go in the ground. But yeah, this is um, tulip crisp up mixed, which I think looks spectacular. Now we've got another amazing tulip down here. I think it's a species tulip and it's called Tulip Bakeri Lilac Wonder. And these will close when it's not sunny, as most of the tulips do. But look at that. How amazing is that? It's a smaller variety probably about half of the height of the one that I've just shown you if I can give you a little comparison there there's still quite a few um, to come out on this one and these these just look amazing I remember the first time this opened and I, I'd seen them on the packet last year but I don't think the packet did them any justice because these truly are stunning lovely little tulip and I've got a few of these dotted throughout the room which you'll see I'm going to move on because I'm conscious of time. You can see we've got a lot of the um, primroses in bloom. These are just uh, primroses that I split from around the garden and popped in here uh, last year. Queen of Sweden's doing amazing. Look at all that foliage and we're only in April. She's just putting out tons of amazing, healthy green foliage. I gave them all a sequestered iron and seaweed feed earlier today. I'm, I tend to do that sort of once every four to six weeks just to keep the foliage nice and healthy and keep the plant as strong as possible. I did it last year, it worked really well, so I'm doing it this year as well. It also makes the blooms, so the, um, the flowers, more intense, I find, in colour. Um, don't know if it does anything for the fragrance, but not a bad shout. There is actually um, another shoot just down at the bottom there coming through. So that's Queen of Sweden. I think she'll probably make it to the third ring this year most likely. Look at that um, Brunera. This is a Brunera, um, not the Jack Frost variety so as you can see the leaves are not silvered like the other one but as I said in my last video this is only just getting going. There'll be a lot more blooms to come off of this. But if you look, they're almost forget-me-not style flowers. And they just, this is just one plant. And we've got this sort of spray of, of blue flowers that are sort of coming up on these tall stems. We usually get a lot more than this. Um, so we're only in April. This will be a lot fuller in maybe the next two to three weeks. So there'll be more of these sprays and they look amazing at night time. They just seem to jump out at you um, against the evening sky. So really, really good one to have. Um, <clears throat> just seeing what else, the iris here, you can see the Siberica is really, really tall already. There's gonna be loads of iris on that. Got the Mountain Lady Muscari there. As you can see the bees as well in this room this year. There's just so many of them having such a feast. I absolutely love it. It's nice when you can put things in that the insects are going to benefit from. And hopefully with what I've got in store for them this coming summer. So I've got a lot more annuals and a few more perennials to go in here. I think they're going to be in for a very special treat indeed. Uh, who we got here? Gentle Hermione. Looking good. Foliage, nice and healthy. Quite a different colour to Queen of Sweden. It's quite a little bit more red and bronze in the foliage. I think that's something that um, is understated when it comes to David Austin roses. 
is the foliage colour. Because, yeah, a lot of them are very similar, but there are some that you just think, wow, that's different, and I'll show you a few um, in a moment's time at the other side of the rose room. We've got around here, just the usual. Got some more of those tulip verissimas there. That's Desdemona leafing out nicely. Got some more of those red tulips over there, more muscari. Oh, this is amazing. So, Gabrielle Oak wasn't doing very well for me last year. As I said in my previous video, she's got a lot of healthy foliage coming out on this rose this year, which is a good sign. A lot at the back there. We're only up to sort of the first ring, um, and that was after pruning. We do have some healthy foliage down below too. What I did last year, as I said in my um, earlier videos, one of the canes was quite low to the ground, so I had a go at pegging the cane. And as you can see just down there, that's the pegged cane. So it runs all the way around and through to there. And basically, along that entire length, there's like four new shoots that are coming up, which potentially are new rose shrubs if they've rooted underneath. I don't know if it's rooted um, because I've not lifted it. I'm not going to either. But considering that my rose is over here, that's going to be like a whole hedge of rose um, roses just growing up the side of this structure, which is fine. I'll find a new way of supporting that if it needs it. Um, but that'll mean that this Gabrielle Oak is going to look a lot bigger than it originally was, hopefully. We'll see. We'll see what happens in the coming months. Um, these tulips are beautiful. Um, <clears throat> these are the double early variety mix that I bought. We've got the white ones that came out first. I love the green marking on the outside. I think this is probably one of the um, sepals before the tulip opened that, that remains. This one is nearly gone over, but it just looked lovely. Very unusual sort of shape, not your classic tulip shape at all. I wouldn't even know how to describe that, to be honest. Um, this is a mixed variety, so you can see there, we I think we might have an orange one. Um, there's a few more heads underneath and a few more just down there. So that's really nice. The um, cornflowers are starting to come out. There's a few already out in the rose room. If I remember right, these weren't out until May last year. So um, it has been quite a, a warm spring. It's been very, very wet incredibly wet in fact i'm surprised it's not raining today um but yeah it's nice to see that these are coming out and i love i love the shape of these flower heads in this stage and when they open i just think they look so pretty almost um scale like tiny little hairs at the end when they open they almost look like um pineapples that have a much more interesting color um, that's the hyacinth you can see there I've just chopped off the old blooms leave the leaves on your hyacinth just like you do with your daffodils your tulips etc so feed the bulb for next year um, once it starts going a bit scraggly and it's all the goodness has gone from the leaves I'll just tidy them up but that won't be for a few months to come yet so much going on in these borders and I'm just skipping over it um, because I don't want the video to be too long but there's just Brunera everywhere, there's the Primulas, look at this for a cluster. So you've got the Mountain Lady Muscari, you've got the Forget-Me-Not, you've got the Primula, you've got an Allium coming out there, you've got the Brunera in the back, there's a pale-eyed yellow grass right there, we've got a cornflower here, which you can see is just revealing some of its purple colour, that'll be out soon I should imagine so wonderful and then right at the side of that as if that's not enough you've got the lands here with its gorgeous soft so soft velvet leaves we've got some more of the upstar tulips just right there foxgloves next to them i'm going to bring you through i don't think i filmed emily bronte um, looking at my previous video, I can't remember if I skipped over this one, but she did really well for me last year, which is when she was planted. 
and since she's had a prune I mean she is putting out foliage left right and center I look at this it's like a stairway to heaven it's up up and up and up and look at the gorgeous red and before anybody says it's not rose rosette disease um, it's definitely not this is how she looks and we don't get that disease in the UK anyway um, but look at all those if you think there's going to be blooms at the end of each one of these you know she's she's going to be smothered this year and she had a lot of blooms on her last year but I think this year is going to blow my mind her foliage is nice as well she's got a sort of semi-gloss um, oh, I'd probably say high gloss actually she's quite shiny I've not sprayed anything on these nice serrated edge to her leaf retains that red underneath almost apple green beautiful absolutely gorgeous and her blooms you know when she I think this is faded that that's not really what she looks like at all um, these labels as good as they are I've seen a lot of people make their own and I think that's what I'm gonna do eventually um, because these colors clearly faded in the Sun from last year and she's not a white rose definitely not I'm gonna do some up updates this year anyway when all my roses are in bloom. Hopefully show you better how these um, rose willow supports work and showcase the rose to the best of its ability. My hope is rather than cutting the roses and bringing them indoors to do the reviews, I want to bring you out into the garden and show you on the bush. Um, a lot of people do cut rose reviews, which is fine, it, it, it's great. You get to see them up in person. I think that's a good way of doing it. Um, but then you never really see how the shrub grows in their garden. Um, so my aim is to try and bring you out and show you the whole thing. And I'll probably cut some off and show you it close up as well. So um, that's that. Got 21 minutes already, dear me. This video is going on. Um, so we got some more white tulips there. That's the double mixed. I don't know what variety this is. But all I can say is that just looks like raspberry ripple ice cream. I've tried to look to see if I've got the name of it, um, but I think it come in some sort of mixed tulip pack. So I don't know what it is, but it's beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Lovely rippling of that red. It's good enough to eat. Um, <clears throat> this one here is Mill on the Floss, which is doing insanely well. It's putting out tons, tons, tons of um, foliage and it's got a gorgeous colour this one. This is what I was saying earlier, some of the colours are quite distinctive and some of them are very similar. This one is distinctive, it's, it's got a bronze sort of to the leaves with the red. Just wonderful. And when they first come out they're almost, I don't know if it's picking it up, there we go, you can see that one with the sunlight, they've got, they've got like a brushed bronze colour to them. They look so nice and this rose is going to be covered in flowers. And we've got buds broken all the way down there. We've got new growth from the bottom. It's already on the third ring and it's only been in a year. So I'm looking forward to seeing that one on the corner of this pillar to see what it looks like. We come round here at the stems on those Dutch iris that's those strap like stems in front of me they'll be in flower in a few months time this is a wonderful tulip as well I think we've already seen that one that one is the um, I think we said that one was the Bicarite Lilac Wonder you can see some new ones that have just opened there sorry about the wind Don't they look so pretty, just dancing in the sunlight? So nice. Alliums there in the middle. There's so many alliums in this bed. I think there's like 12 in each section, possibly even more. So when they all come out later on down the year, that's just gonna be like a sea of purple with the Irish Sibiricas in the middle as well. That's hopefully gonna just be a purple explosion. Um, so moving down, 
Well, they've actually closed because the sun's going in. I wanted to show you these ones. They're called Tulip Little Beauty. Again, another species tulip. It's a shame it's not open because it's got such amazing detail in the centre. You can just about see the blue, almost violet throats down in the middle. And against that pink, they look a little bit like the Baker Eye Lilac Wonder, but obviously different colours. And those doubles there, look at those. They just look so elegant. Catching the sun moving in the breeze. What could be better than that? And I also noticed recently as well that my chives which I put in, you can see we've got little chive heads already developing which is cool. I dug these out of the kitchen garden earlier this year and they flowered on mass last year up there and I thought wow that's going in the rose room next year you can see just behind them we've got some perennial cornflowers which again are dotted throughout I think this is um, Anna Louise Clematis already got buds Just growing like mad I haven't even got round to putting the string supports on these posts so she's just grabbing on it onto anything that she can and going for it. She's a beautiful flower. You can see there. And she's paired with Gabrielle Oak, so I think they'll complement really well. This is a lovely little section. We've got the rosette of um, foxgloves, leaves, We've got the forget me nots. This one here is the Muscari, and it's known as Joyce Spirit. It's a darker variety. More forget me nots, Brunera. And a lovely yellow, soft yellow primrose. And then background to these red tulips. Which maybe we're expecting rain, I don't know. But they seem to have closed up. Got more of the um, Mountain Lady Brunera. Again with the forget-me-nots. We've got a very interesting tulip which is about to come in to flower soon. And I think this is called Queen of the Night has a really rich almost burgundy purple black petals they look so rich so I'm looking forward to seeing that one in bloom I've seen a few of those coming up throughout the rose room I bought several packs of that so that should be really nice I've also got this plant down here which I bought from um, one of the I think it was the autumn Malvern show could have been the spring might have been the spring um, Malvern show which is one of the local shows in my area. Um, I think it's pronounced Circeum Um and it's almost like a thistle style flower, as you can see from the leaves, it's not a weed, but it gets these lovely um, heads that are quite similar to the perennial cornflower in fact, um, but they've got this purpley pink fuzz instead of the frills that the cornflower has. Looks a bit like something called a sweet sultan flower and they'll be on tall stems. I remember seeing it on one of the stands and I just picked up a couple because I thought I'll probably put it somewhere. Only one of them survived so this is where it is. So my hope if it survives well here which it seems to be doing because when I planted it there was nothing there. It was just the crown and the roots so this is all new growth. So I'll, I'll hopefully split this over time and spread it around the room if it does well try and collect some of those seed get some more grown um, so that's that one look at this clematis this is josephine paired with desdemona going crazy growing up even the grasses that are in here fascinating clematis how they wrap their leaves around anything they can really to get some leverage and reach for the sky um, I think that's probably everything that I want to show you in this section gosh this is taking ages this is the trouble when I do these videos you see I say oh I'm only going to be five minutes in this section and I end up being half an hour there's just so much to show you I feel like I don't want you to miss anything um, look at those so that's mountain lady 
with Joyce Spirit. Those are the Muscari next to the Brunera. We've got a lovely different Primula there. Foxgloves are coming in really well. Start to see some spires coming up out the centre of those. More tulips. These are all sort of repeats, so I'm not going to go into too much detail in this part of the rose room. The Princess Anne there. The Baker Eye tulips down there. Oh, I just love that. That just looks insane. And this netting that I've put in, I never really put it in with the tulips in mind. It was more for things like the iris, the foxgloves, the really, really tall stuff that I thought, okay, it's going to need some support to stop the wind and the rain from collapsing everything. But there's going to be another layer as well later on maybe in the next four to six weeks going on top. Exactly the same size. That's why I've used slightly longer canes. Um, but for now, it's actually working really well at supporting the tulips. They seem to be loving it. Um, and I've managed to put that throughout the whole room. Super easy to put up. Um, got it from my local garden centre. I actually went back yesterday and bought the entire row, um, which wasn't terribly expensive. Um, and this can be reused as long as you're careful with it you don't snap it like I did there you can see we've got a break in one of them not a massive disaster it's still got good tension throughout the whole structure um, but hopefully fingers crossed with the annuals that are going in here and the perennials that are tall I hope it just means that the borders look the best that they can possibly look um, later on down the line Look at that collection there. Primrose, Brunera, Muscari. Beautiful. Got the Aquilegias are coming in as well. They'll be up soon. That's Eustacia 5, putting on a lot of leaves, double tulips. Just going to walk you around this section now. Yeah, unfortunately. Tulip Little Beauty, even this one. These were open about an hour ago. It's typical I'd start the video and then they'll go to sleep. They'll be open again another day. Hopefully I'll manage to put a picture on my Instagram. I'll be able to show you them then. Which, by the way, if you're not following, is the Herefordshire Gardener. Same as the YouTube channel. I try put different things on there so that there's a bit more interest. Um... This section doesn't look like there's a great deal. I absolutely love these guys. This is Primula Zebra, which I've shown you in a previous video. Oh, this is wonderful. The detailing on those petals is insane. I bet these would make um, a really nice um, flower print. Um, I've seen videos where you can press flower petals um, onto special paper. I think you just roll them on. Um, and then you're left with the print. That's something I might try later down the line when I've got a bit more time on my hands. So, one, one lonesome mis um, hyacinth there, which is not gone over completely yet. Some tulips coming up next to it. I must have removed about a hundred um, hyacinth stems that have gone soggy and manky, or really sort of slimy actually, because um, they've gone completely over. But what a display they created. It was amazing. The scent in this room was heavenly. It was just insane. I didn't expect it to be as good as that. Maybe because we've got the hedging all the way around. It's trapping some of the scent. Um, but that were a winning combination. And I'm so glad that they're in. Because fingers crossed. As long as the bulbs don't rot. Which I don't think they will. We'll get that again next year. We've got a few um, hyacinths in the garden already. Which do well and come back every year. So I've got high hopes for that. There we've got Silas Marno, which I've shown you in a previous video. More of the tulips. This is the double variety again. Get the camera to focus. Just gorgeous. And then moving around. I think this one must be the Parisima. The one that I said looked like a swan. To me anyway, it does. The colours just look like that. Just they're beautiful. And against these primroses with the mascara and the blues, got Dame Judy Dench in there. 
Funny to sit with that. Tulips. Th this is nothing as well. Like they, they, this is just the start of the tulips. And my battery just died on my phone, so I've just gone in to get the um, charger pack, which is quite handy. This means I can come back and crack on. I was just saying, this is just the um, start of the tulip season. So there's some earlies that have come out. A few are going over, but there's a lot more that are coming in. Um, and if you look here, you can see there's tulips here that are just about to come out, probably within the next week. Um, so this really is just the start of tulip season. We've got those wonderful red ones, an early variety that come out. Next to Tranquility, David Austin Rose. I just love the colours in these beds at the minute. They're just giving so much. And this is just the spring display. There's going to be a late spring display, there's going to be a summer display, there's going to be an autumn display the roses all just keep doing what they do and reblooming so we might get three flushes out of those this year the clematis which will be up these posts um, hopefully do really well because they've been in a year now and I grew them on for a couple of years before that so they're well established they've got a really thick fibrous um, root ball which is good some of them haven't made it, I don't know why. Only maybe out of this entire room, I think about three or four, but the majority of them have got absolutely fine. Um, so anyway, um, I'm gonna take you into the second half of the rose room. We're starting that top quarter up there, um, which is gonna be new to all of you guys, because I don't think I've done any videos on this one, not on my YouTube channel anyway. I did some pictures last year on those central roses. So let's just crack on with it and show you what we've got. Just bear with me a second. I'll have to make some notes here, um, just to remind me and make it as quick as possible for you guys. Just going through. So here in the top corner, we've got Bring Me Sunshine by David Austin. This is not a rose review video, by the way. I just thought I'd give you an early look in April, just so you can see what the foliage is looking like and who's here. And who they're paired with so bring me sunshine i think was introduced in 2022 so quite a new one it's got large orange yellow blooms which have a sort of strong myrrh fragrance beautiful rose last year this one so planted i think around about i want to say july august last year lovely cup shaped blooms massive beautiful this should reach about four and a half feet tall, so definitely go to the top of the hoops in time and about three and a half feet wide. And I've got this one paired with a clematis at the back there. I don't know if you can see, that's already coming into, um, I say bud, not bud, it's shooting out from the base and from some of the old stems, which I cut back slightly. And that is, I think it's pronounced Wazoska Nike, or Wazoska Nike, not sure, um, but it's a, uh, beautiful purple flowering clematis. I'll try add some pictures just so you can get a better impression. I'm not going to go through the companion plant in all the tulips on this side but you'll see them as we go through. I just want to whiz through and show you which roses and um, clematis I've got. I'm just trying to see if that little beauty was open down there but no it's gone to sleep just like the rest of them. Here we've got Bosca Bell which was introduced in 2012, another David Austin Rose. This has got gorgeous large coral pink blooms. Has again a strong myrrh fragrance, quite nice actually. And this should reach about three and a half feet tall by about three and a half feet wide. So again, should reach the top of these rings, not a problem. Um, quite light green foliage on Bosca Bell. Love the shape of these blooms. Again, form quite a neat cup of folded petals ruffled inside um, look absolutely gorgeous you can just see it sticking out on the label there but I'll get a picture from last year popped up and that clematis is Valesiu which you can see at the back there hopefully those colour combinations will be quite nice that's already got a flower bud on it what we 
you can see. I like as well how the roses have got their own sort of designated um, sections in the room. So there's no green meshing that goes through those. As you can see at the end, it stops. It only goes between for all the other companion plants. So when the roses bush out and fill out these rings and sort of the rings disappear, I know where my roses are. I like neatness when it comes to them. I like to know that they're healthy. I like to be able to see them for pests, black spot on the leaves, so I can remove that. Um, and these hoops just give me the opportunity to bend the canes almost in a spiral inside and outside them. Um, so hopefully the, the canes will produce more blooms that way because as I've said before, when you bend your canes to um, 45 degrees or more, it tends to cause all of the dormant buds to wake up um, and start growing. So you get more shoots, which is great. We've got another queen of the night there. Instantly recognisable tulip. That's going to be dark purple. I can't wait to show you guys that one. It's beautiful if you've already grown it. Maybe you agree, maybe you don't. Um, but from what I've seen on the pictures, it looks amazing. And <laughs> to be honest, the pictures have not done any of these tulips justice. So hopefully this one's going to knock my socks off as well. Um, bringing you through here. More tulips. Here we've got, um, I think this is Elizabeth. Um, this was introduced quite recently, 2022. And she has um, medium pale pink to apricot blooms. Um, strong, sweet old rose fragrance. And she'll be about four and a half feet tall by four and a half feet wide. So quite, quite a big shrub. And as you can see, she's got lovely foliage. Quite different. The leaves are more textured. Um, and you've got the red there. Quite a nice dark green with a bronzed effect as well. I really like the foliage of Elizabeth and the blooms are amazing, the scents are so good. And she bloomed last year quite a lot, so I'm expecting much more from her this year. She's paired with obviously Prince Charles, Clementus at the back, who's doing quite well um, and has actually grown taller than Elizabeth at the back there. So hopefully they'll complement each other well. That's Elizabeth and Prince Charles. Just bringing you down. Trying to show you what's in the beds as well. It's, it's exactly the same um, as what's down in the other beds. The foxgloves, when they come out, my God, are they gonna look amazing. They're just dotted sporadically throughout and there's gonna be those tall spires with the alliums and with the iris. There's a load of other stuff in here as well, which will be out around about the same time. It's going to be a feast for the eyes. I've just spotted another one of those crisper tulips that's starting to open. Those petals, they just look like feathers on a bird. They're so pretty. How a plant can create such a beautiful shape blows my mind. Anyway, who have we got here? This will be Harlow Car. This one is David Austin introduced in 2004. Got this one in the bargain bucket. My partner's nan bought it for me, bless her. Um, actually, she bought this one. She bought Elizabeth and she bought Bring Me Sunshine. This was the one that was in the bargain bucket, so it wasn't doing that well. But since I've put it in, we've got some new canes that have come up. They're still a bit thin, I expect them to thicken up, thicken up, should I say, over time. But this is another one that's got a very unique foliage colour. It doesn't look like any of the other roses that I've got. It's sort of a very light, I don't know, like a light green, bronzy colour. Different to like Mill on the Floss, which is much more red in there. This is definitely green with the bronze on top. It's quite nice actually. And uh, Harlow Car has um, medium sized mid pink blooms, as you can see there on the picture at the bottom of the picture that I've put up on screen. This has a strong old rose fragrance, so a bit like Gertrude Jekyll, which is always nice, and should grow to around about three foot tall. So, again, should reach near the top of these um, 
willow hoops and it'll reach about three foot wide as well so that's hollow car if i bring you around this corner at the back there we've got a rose a climbing um rose a medium rambler should i say excuse me called gislaine de filagonde um has a medium musk fragrance and has pale apricot blooms in clusters this was tiny last year it was probably only half the size it is now and it flowered incredibly well it's a repeat bloomer as well it's not a david austin rose though it's quite an older rose um but beautiful soft apricot color and my hope is i'm going to make some smaller willow rings like these and i'm going to dot them around these posts on each different face just going up and then again along the top of this um four by four post so if I have like one on that face, the next one will be on the underside and then the one along will be on the other side of the post and then the next one will be on the top. You get the idea. It's almost spiraling the rings around um, the posts. And the idea then will be to untangle the string from Gislaine at the back there, work out which stems I've got and sort of basically poke them through the hoops and just um, try and train them up and over this arch. Um, I've got one on the other side of this room as well, just down there. You can see it just at the end. I'll come to that in a second. So that'll create a nice backdrop of um, pale apricot coloured blooms, which would be really, really nice. Down at the base of this is a shrub rose. Um, and this is, um, I believe, the shepherdess. Beautiful, beautiful rose. I seen this one when I went to David Austin um, Shropshire Gardens. And it was in bloom on the stand and I'd seen it in the gardens as well. And I was like, my God, there's just something about this rose. Um, the way that she catches light in her blooms. Um, the blooms look amazing. They, they just look so iridescent. That's probably the best word to use. Um, and she's um, introduced by David Austin in 2005. She's got these mid sort of pale apricot blooms. Uh, medium fruity fragrance and she again should grow to around about four foot tall three and a half foot wide I've just realized um, Halokar I never actually told you which Clematis um, Halokar was planted with and that's um, Romantica um, which is at the back there bringing you back round to um, the Shepherdess she's paired with a Clematis at the back through there known as Rouge Cardinal um, so hopefully they look great together She's only little. Um, I think I bought her, I want to say September is when I went. I think, no, I didn't go in September. I went in June. Um, June or, yeah, I think late June, I went to the David Austin Gardens. I had her in a pot, that was it, for ages, just in the green David Austin square pots. Because I'd not done this part of the rose room. I'd not even um, sorted out the planting in here. So she just sat in a pot for a while, which is why she's probably smaller than all the other ones. But she's healthy, she's got some really strong canes at the base, and she's putting on new growth. So see what happens. She had a good feed, she's got mycorrhizal fungi when she was planted in the root zone. And um, she got the sequestered iron and seaweed feed earlier today. So yeah, really looking forward to seeing what she performs like in this top corner. If we move down through this section, this was another one I bought. Oh God, I can't remember when I bought this one. I think I got this one even before I went to the David Austin Gardens from one of the local garden centres. This is Port Sunlight. Um, <clears throat> and Port Sunlight was introduced by David Austin in 2007. Has these gorgeous medium sized apricot blooms just see a little bit faded on the tag there but I will be popping pictures up on this video this has a medium tea rose fragrance and should grow to around about four and a half foot tall by four and a half foot wide so definitely gonna fill the rings over time which is great and at the back there we've got a clematis called Daniel Deronda um, so they'll look really nice I think Daniel Deronda is a purple clematis from memory so that's Port Sunlight here we've got some of the older roses so these were the original ones in this room um, the only thing that existed in this room were those that short pergola at the end and this one here and then this central pergola everything else that you can see all the side beds 
the pergolas down there which need their top supports putting on down at the ends and across there. I've got them already cut. They'll be going in in the next few weeks. But everything else is new. I've literally turned this into a David Austin road room with companion planning. Um, but this is Claire Austin. And you can see she's really mature. Um, she's probably about four or five years old now. The cane thickness on those is insane. I'd say that's at least diameter wise, maybe two and a half inch thick, maybe more. Um, she's had a good prune again this year, not that long ago actually. I only fit these um, rose rings on, I'd say, within the last two weeks. So I had to prune her a little bit to get them on. Uh, they, it wasn't the easiest thing to do, but then again it wasn't the hardest. So you can do it with mature shrubs as well as newly planted roses. I'd say it's better to put the rose rings on when you're planting the rose for the first time. Um, but clearly you can see I've managed to get rings all the way around this rose, three in fact, top to bottom. Um, and I think it looks great. And, and you know, these roses last year, I had string wrapped around them. I had peony supports at the bottom. I had bamboo canes stuck down the middle, all hidden by the foliage in the height of summer. But then when it come to prune them and we had heavy rain and wind, sometimes, you know, the supports that I had just weren't adequate, even though there was a lot there. So I knew last year, I thought I've got to come up with something that does the job of these willow rings and that's where the idea was born. Um, so lots of support there and I can tie them in. You can see they're moving slightly in the middle, um, but when these stems get a bit longer, they're going to get bent and tied in to 45 degrees or less. Um, and hopefully, you know, that's going to look amazing. She was covered in blooms last year. Covered. I mean covered. They must have been, oh, I'm not exaggerating when I say over 200 blooms on one shrub, probably more if I'm being honest. And she's got um, creamy white, medium sized cupped blooms with strong myrrh fragrance. She's described as a medium climber, so she can go up to 12 foot. I'd say at the minute she's probably approaching 6 foot, so she could be double that height. She could easily go to the top of that. Post. I don't want to grow them that tall. Um, I quite like keeping them maybe a foot taller than she is now. Um, so when I prune, I take my pruning cuts a lot lower as you can see. And that just means the extra growth that comes up will probably arrive somewhere where I want it to be. Um, this particular Claire is paired with two Clematis. I don't know if you can see, I, I, put, I bought some terracotta pots um, early last year, so 2023, when I put my clematis in this part of the room in. Now there is clematis in this garden in different areas. We're on a medium clay soil and I just weren't sure how well they would do in this soil and considering that I'd grown, there were supermarket bought clematis, I'd grown them on and unpotted them for two years. I didn't just want to stick them in the ground to find that none of them survived because I'd have been a bit gutted about that considering the effort that I'd put in. I know I didn't pay very much for them. I think there were three clematis for five pounds, which is insanely cheap. But, you know, I'd, I'd babied them along and I'd looked after them and I just wanted them to survive. So I put one um, in a pot and I planted one in the ground. Anyway, um, short on the... Uh, Cut a long story short, um, both of them survived, um, which is good. So at the back there, I think we've got Mrs. N. Thompson, and then here we've got Mrs. G. Jackman. Um, so some of the roses I've paired with two clematis, some of them I've only paired with one. Um, originally I was gonna put two per post, and I could still do that, but I've decided to stick to one per post because I actually want to um, put some other climbers on these posts. Um, annual sweet peas, which I am going to literally train up the posts um, and not into the roses. I don't know if that's going to work. I'm going for this fragrance and the colour and added interest, um, but I don't want to overkill it at the same time. So if I find when I put them in that it's just not working and they're choking out my roses, which I don't think they will do because I'm going to quite literally train them up the posts. As you can see, I've got um, gardening wire on each face of those posts, uh, on all of the posts in the room. Any that haven't got the gardening wire on will have it on shortly. 
so I've got stuff to tie the sweet peas in and train them in a spiral up the post. So fingers crossed it works well, but we'll see. And if it works really well, you know, the roses with the sweet peas and the clematis and the fragrance, oh God, it'd be amazing. So that's Claire Austin anyway, um, on that post. As I said, we've got a few tulips here, but because of the mice, there's not as many as uh, I would have liked, but hey ho, you live and you learn. Um, I will make sure when I buy some at the end of this year, when they're on offer, I won't be putting them in the garage again for the mice to um, feast on, definitely not. This is another mature rose. This one is Bathsheba. Um, and Bathsheba was introduced in 2016, so relatively new. Gorgeous. This has got to be one of my favourite roses. If anybody asks me which is your favourite in the garden so far, it'll be Bathsheba. Very, very large apricot cup blooms with a strong myrrh fragrance, almond. It's just wonderful. It's gorgeous. Again, described as a short climber. It doesn't get as tall as Claire, um, so around about 10 foot. But as you can see, I've got Bathsheba around about the same height as Claire, and I don't really want it you know much taller than me um, so again low pruning cuts and that's what you do with these climbers or or the taller shrub roses prune where you want the new growth to eventually well sorry no that didn't make sense prune low work out how much growth you're going to get in that year um, and you can do that simply by looking how much it grew the previous year before you come to do your tidy prune and um, so that'll give you an idea from your old pruning cuts to where it finally reached how much roughly it's going to grow in that season and then all I'll do is I'll just take it down by that amount um, and sometimes as well you see we've got some quite old thick stems down there it's good to do some rejuvenation pruning from time to time so taking out some of the larger stems to encourage this new green stuff to come through um, and that'll hopefully just mean that the rose lives a very long time but Bathsheba's looking amazing we love this rose and this was just covered in blooms last year. If you've been on my Instagram, I think I might have put some stuff on there. I've definitely put it on my Facebook page before. And I've put it on the David Austin Rose group as well. It's amazing at the minute. It doesn't really look like much. But I know what's to come. And you will not see those rose rings. You might see part of them. I think they look beautiful anyway. Really, really natural and work well with a hedge at the minute which is a similar colour it won't be for long it's starting to green out as well um where was i sorry um, bashiba is paired with two clematis again one in the insurance pot just down there and another one in the ground so um i think the one in the ground is duchess of edinburgh it's a beautiful clematis and um, this one in the pot is called vilde lion um, which is nice and they both survived so um, they'll be going up that post this year, which is good. Um, the next rose along here is, believe it or not, just another Claire Austin. So I didn't actually plant these roses. These were planted by the previous owner of the property. Um, great choices, what can I say? Claire Austin and Bathsheba. And it literally goes top corner Claire Austin, Bathsheba, Claire Austin, Bathsheba again. And then that's repeated on the opposite side. Um, so we've got four Bathsheba's and four Claire Austin's in this centre. Um, if it was up to me, I probably would have planted different ones down here, just so that you've got a bit more of a variety. But I think we've got enough roses in here for variety. Um, and these are really, really nice roses. If they were rubbish roses, which there aren't very many of, but if they were, I would have been a bit more disappointed. But these are fantastic roses. Excellent choice yeah very very happy customer um so yeah this one is claire austin but the clematis are different so this claire austin is paired with blue angel on the left and on the right i think that is uh, madame julia coravon um, so two beautiful clematis which will hopefully reach up that post and go right to the top we'll see um, but yeah, Claire, again, had a prune not that long ago. So normally in April, these are a, a lot more leafed out like this. Um, but I'd not got round to pruning them because I'd not got round to putting the um, 
rose ring supports on, I thought I'd try and do it all in one. So a little bit of a slightly later prune, I think, must have been somewhere like mid-March. It's not ideal. I like to try and get all of my stuff done very early, sort of late January, early Feb. Um, but it, it doesn't matter, you can see. We've got a lot of foliage coming out there. And I've got every hope that she's going to be smothered in blooms again um, this year. So looking forward to that. Look at these lupins. These were here last year. I've put lupins everywhere in this room. Um, this oh, this display in this border last year was amazing because they sort of just... I mean, those ones don't look as randomly planted, but there are a few um, dotted throughout this um, bed. Can't really see them because they've not come through as much as the um, ones that were there last year, for obvious reasons, because they're not as mature um but you can see like down here they're just dotted throughout we've got them over there as well and when they're in flower oh god the spires that are just dotted throughout and the different colors and the bees just seem to go crazy for them such a wonderful plant they need good airflow because they can suffer from powdery mildew particularly if they don't get enough water, they can flop. Um, they've got a, quite a large tap root that goes deep down and they can be prone to rot if you've got them in a, in a, in a spot that doesn't drain very well. But these do really well here. And this has got full sun, so it's probably why they do so well. So I'm really looking forward to seeing. And, and each one of these plants, there must have been about six, seven, eight, maybe even nine spires per cluster. So very floriferous. Anyway, back to the rose tar. Um, so as I said earlier, this is Bathsheba. And this was the one that I always took pictures of because it's at the front of the rose, uh, this particular rose arch. Um, you can see they look lovely when you've obviously got the um, apricot orange of the Bathsheba and then the white of the Claire and then the apricot orange again and then the white of the Claire at the back. Really excited to see all the other roses, which of course weren't here last year. Um, can you imagine just like walking around this in the summer with all the perennials that will be up, all the other stuff that I've got to go in and then the roses in between and just having a good look at everything and having a smell. The fragrance is going to be oh, divine. I can't wait. Um, anyway, Bathsheba, who's this one paired with? So this... I believe on this side, just down there, I want to say Comtesse de Bouchard, I think is that one. And then the other side in the pot, in the insurance pot, is um, Etoile Violette, which is a lovely purple Clematis. Um, so that'll look wonderful going up that post. I'm going to bring you into the last quarter of the room. The sun's coming out now, which looks lovely. We love that willow at the end as well. It's just draping over, it'll, f it'll fill out a little bit as well as the year goes on. Just like a curtain of foliage and I love the way it moves in the wind. It's a nice backdrop actually for this room. It's only about 20 year old. I think that's when the previous owner planted it. We're very lucky that we've got a lot of trees in this garden, which used to just be one big giant field. So none of these beech hedges, this is beech and hornbeam if you're interested none of these used to be here so when we've been um, taking on the property and bought the house we're very lucky that we've got a lot of mature shrubs obviously pruned the hedges and keep them looking tidy and we've got another willow there just before you get to the pond which is just beautiful and keeping up the tradition i potted a new cherry i've put actually five new cherry blossoms in in the last week. That's Thai Haku, I think it's called, and will form a massive tree in time. When I say massive, it's not very tall, but it spreads. We've got one called Mount Fuji, which is just coming out of blossom now. You can just see it over the top of that hedge. That, when it came into blossom, oh God, the fragrance alone and the blossom, it was just like having a giant sweet cloud hovering in your garden at low altitude it was just amazing i love that tree so it's really nice that we've got another five dotted throughout the garden 
um, and that one I put there because a bit like the willow you've got the backdrop there I think in the spring garden how lovely it'll be just to have a white cloud hovering over there and it's fragrant too so that should be really nice you can see um, the grass doesn't look the best on this side because I've been doing a lot of work in these beds and we've had a lot of rain so it does look a bit muddy it will recover it always does um, and we get a lot of clover in this grass as well can't wait to show you that later down the line because um, the bees go bonkers for the clover the little flowers that come up um, who have we got here this is Bathsheba as I said so we've got Bathsheba Claire Bathsheba Claire right down to the bottom but this time this Bathsheba here we've got Princess Diana in the insurance pot just down there she's put out loads of grip I'm going to show you in a second um, and then we've also got Romantica I thought that would be nice to put with Princess Diana um, so we've got like a pink and a dark purple it's the names more than anything um, as you can see look at all those shoots my god I wouldn't even like to guess how many shoots are coming out of the base of that pot the rabbits did get to her early this year they seem to have buggered off now thank god don't know what they're eating hopefully not my new blossom trees um, which have tree guards on by the way so fingers crossed they'll be fine um, I think they probably found something else of seasonal interest on the menu um, this Bathsheba here so I've pruned that not that long ago as you can tell it's already budding out um, one of the stems I think it was this one here um, try and get the focus yeah anyway you get the point this stem here I cut it back again because I don't want the rose to get too tall and I thought I'd just stick it in the ground I don't know if it's gonna survive I've done a lot of rose cuttings so I've got quite a lot of experience this is quite a fat stem so it'll have quite a bit of resource left in it and just because you can see buds on it which by the way we're already on before I cut it does not mean that it's surviving I've got I think if I'm being honest it's probably gonna go black underneath the soil and it'll die um, but I thought you know what this Bathsheba is a lot smaller than the other one um, and that's because we had a, a wineberry don't know if you've heard of those growing here in that section and it was growing up here beautiful berries they're edible um, really really nice and things like smoothies um, I don't know if it was planted there intentionally before but it had to come out it's basically like a a raspberry or a bramble um, beautiful foliage lovely color but I think it was competing with this Bathsheba because clearly it's nowhere near the size of that one um, for water and nutrients so I've completely dug it out and got rid of it and we've got a few others in the garden and they they root like crazy so you just got to be careful with the wine berries um, so hopefully this Bathsheba do a little bit better now it was still quite big um, but yeah, when you've got one at the side of it to compare it to, it wasn't doing as well. I'd say maybe 75% of that one. Um, so we'll see what happens. I'll keep you updated on this little stick that I've stuck in the ground. This is not how I normally root my roses. If you're interested, I've got previous videos. I've got a really good, good success rate on my propagation of roses. So really pleased with that. But we'll see what happens with this. Everybody loves an experiment. Um, so that's Bathsheba coming around here. We've got Claire, Austin. Um, we've got some interesting foliage down here. This is Jacob's Ladder or Pomonium. And we seem to have a cluster of it in this section. Beautiful, beautiful um, flower, um, late spring, mid to late spring. Tall spires probably reaching up to second willow hoop, maybe a little bit higher and um, sort of bell-shaped purple flowers very attractive to the bees there's a large clump of it over there as well I think in the next few weeks I'm going to split these up um, we've got a few other patches throughout the garden um, but I don't just want it all around these roses there's, there's enough of it here now I think I can maybe just spread it around the room a little bit and it naturally spreads anyway so um, yeah free plants always makes me happy um, so did I tell you who Claire is paired with? No, I didn't. 
Um, so this Claire is paired with a clematis called Royal Veloz, I believe is in the pot, and John Paul II is in the ground, or the other way around, I'm not sure, but those are the two that are in here. Beautiful clematis. We've got a Strantia in here as well, um, which I love because they hold their flowers, bracts, whatever you want to call them. I think a Strantia is a bract with loads of little flowers inside. I'm not entirely sure, um, but they, they just seem to last forever. Um, we've got them in both of these borders um, and around the garden, and I want to introduce some more Strantia uh, into this room. So that's another thing on the list. Um, as you can see, look, we've got a white perennial cornflower that's out. I love those. I'm going to go up and give you a close-up of that in a second, actually, because it's beautiful. You need to see it close up. More lupins on this side. Then we come back to a Bathsheba. Um, this Bathsheba was amazing last year. So all of these roses did well last year, but this one I paired with um, a Clematis on the left here called Hagley Hybrid. And this colour combination was just insane. Honestly, it was so good. That Hagley Hybrid grew all the way through this Bathsheba. You've got to imagine it without the rose rings. The Bathsheba did sort of, you know, it, I had to support it with string and support it with peony supports and the bamboo canes. It was the same job lot on all of these roses. It were a bit of a pain in the backside, to be honest. Um, but hopefully now I've got these willow rings, that will just take care of all of that. It still look beautiful. Um, but yeah, with that Hagley hybrid growing through it and flowering at the same time, it, it was insane. And those blooms are huge. The um, sort of a pale purple colour is Hagley hybrid. It just looks so good. I would have never naturally paired that with Bathsheba, but I, I, I don't even know why I put it in, to be honest. Um, I think I planted these ones quite randomly, these Clematis. Just took whatever was next in line and popped it in all the way through the room but this combo is insane and the other rose in the pot is um, Polish Spirit which is very free, free flower and small purple flowers and that definitely will climb up there as will Hagley Hybrid so I'm really excited to see that again this year can't emphasize enough how happy I was with that combination we had um, Rose Campion in here as well which you can see is down there again um, and all of that together, amazing. Absolutely amazing. Coming down here, we've got another Claire Austin. Um, and she's paired there with a rose in the insurance pot called Justa. Uh, not a rose, sorry, a Clematis. Got bloody rose on the brain. Um, so that's just a Clematis. And there was um, a Clematis at the side. I think that might be Miss Bateman, but sadly, Miss Bateman is no more. I might pop another one in there. I've got one called Rebecca, which I bought at the Malvern show, autumn show this time. I think I'll put Rebecca in there because she's doing really well. Or I've got one called Tigra or Tiagra. I don't know how to pronounce it. And um, that's another nice clematis. I've got quite a few left over. I must have about another, I want to say 25, 30 clematis that need, need a spot. So um, yeah. It doesn't matter that some of these have not made it. Gosh, I might take off in this wind. That's pretty strong. Um, anyway, this is a new rose. Planted quite recently, actually. This is um, Wild Eve. And um, Wild Eve was introduced in 2003, I believe, by David Austin. Uh, has large, light pink um, blooms, which have a light, fruity fragrance and Wild Eve should reach around about four foot tall by five foot wide. So she's a bit wider than she is tall. So she'll definitely fill out this space. I've got quite a lot of space between my roses. I know some people plant them a lot closer together. Um, but I've purposely done it like this so I can have my companions in the middle. So that is Wild Eve and she's paired with Clematis Dark Eyes at the back there. So that should look really nice. Colour combination. And she'll definitely reach to the top over time with those willow rings. Lovely collection of perennials in here. Same as all the stuff that I've discussed. Geraniums are really coming in. These are the hardy geraniums. And we've got about five or six different varieties in these beds. And they're like the glue, I like to think, of my 
cottage style planting um, they really do sort of merge everything together and they just flower and flower and flower um, constantly you can give them a hard prune a little bit later in the season and up the foliage will come again and they'll flower again for you so really really good plant to have just notice with this wild eek look at the foliage color there again unusual we've got sort of a how to describe that it's almost like camo green with the red border and the serrated edge and the sheen of the petal and that's as it's coming out and then you get the dark green foliage in the more mature leaf oh we've got a pheasant somewhere um, so that's wild eve in this corner is a rose that i absolutely had to buy i put it on my wish list and i never got round to getting it um, if I just move this primula, this is Nye and this is a David Austin Rose um, introduced in 2021, so quite a new one in their collection it's got medium pale yellow blooms and it's got a medium myrrh fragrance um, reaching around about three and a half foot by two and a half foot wide so not as wide but definitely will grow tall um, it's about three and a half foot like I just mentioned this one I remember seeing a rose when I went to the Shropshire Gardens last year at David Austin headquarters and I just kept, if you've ever been, there's so many roses in there that, you know, you start off by looking at all the labels and then you kind of, you just get whisked away with looking at the roses and there was just one that I kept seeing that I thought, oh gosh, the way that's catching the light, it, it just looks amazing and, and I checked the label and it said Nye and I was going around the David Austin Gardens and I kept seeing the same rose and instantly recognising it though. There was just something about it, about the shape of the bloom and the way that the light was absorbed by the, the blooms and then radiated back out, that it just was instantly recognisable amongst all the other roses. And um, I thought I need this rose in my collection. So I've managed to pop this one in the corner um, and that's just in front of the Gislaine de Filigondo, which is, look how tall that's got already. We're only in April and that's the um, rambling repeat rambler beautiful rose I think them two will look amazing together um, and the clematis that this one is paired with uh, there's actually two on this one so I've got Star of India and Ernest Markham so lots of colour to add to the back there um, which would be really nice got more tulips in this corner I think we did better on this section with the tulips. It was when I got round to planting tulips in this section that the mice had done most of their damage. So these um, shorter two and a half, three foot borders at the side, the tulips, I managed to um, get them in, in time. This one is unmistakably um, Olivia Rose Austin. And if any of you've got her, you'll, you'll know the foliage straight away. Lovely sort of red color to the foliage. She's doing amazingly well to say she only went in last year. This side of the um, border, because it's slightly lower down, the garden is on a gradual slope down towards the um, very bottom where the pond is. We've got a natural um, clay-based pond which just fills with rainwater. And there's a lot of newts in there at the minute. I'll try and get a video together to show you that as well. It's very interesting. Um, but yeah, sometimes we do get puddles of water at the back of these beds. But to be honest, it's drained within half a day and we have had a lot of rain recently. So, um, you know, it's drained now, in fact, and that was full earlier on this lunchtime. There was water right up to the sort of the grass level. Um, as long as it drains and as long as it's not sitting there permanently, they'll be fine. You know, if you think about your bare roots, which you, you order um, late in the year and you're all right to sit them in a bucket of water as long as you keep changing it for quite some time and they'll be fine. It's no different when you put them in the ground and, and roses really like the clay soil because it's moisture retentive um, it reduces stress in my roses during the height of summer when it's absolutely baking in this room there's a lot of water under the ground um, I need to mulch these beds I've got a load of mulch on the driveway um, lots of piles of it actually that's another job over the next oh, nearly fell over um, next couple of weeks sorry i thought it was real funny 
Um, next couple of weeks, yeah, mulching the beds. So um, that is Olivia Rose Austin, introduced in 2014 by David Austin. Um, large, mid pink, I'd say, blooms, medium fruity fragrance, and uh, about three and a half foot tall by three and a half foot wide, but beautiful, beautiful spring foliage. I just love, love, love that colour. Beautiful. Hopefully she's going to put on a load of blooms this year. She did last year and I only put her in um, around about August last year. And she bloomed a little heart out until the first frost arrived. So fingers crossed she'll do really well this year. She seemed happy enough last year. A little bee there. Our neighbour's got um, hives at the bottom of his garden for honeybees. There's some of that I think I want to have a go at eventually. But I feel like with all these plants, I don't think they've got many flowering plants. And they might have in the top end of their garden, but certainly nothing down by the hives. So I think I'm just um, supplying them with endless honey or supplying the bees with the nectar. And they're producing the honey from that, which is nice. Um, but it'd be nice to maybe produce some of our own. I don't know. We'll see. I've got that many things. And then I'm working as well, so, you know. We've all got lots of things on our wish list. We just can't, unfortunately, do them all at once. Um, who's this? Oh, this is the poet's wife. This is a lovely rose, guys. So this was introduced by David Austin in 2014. Look at all the foliage on this. Insane. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. These have, um, the poet's wife's got very large, I'd say rich yellow blooms. Spot it a mile off really really strong heady fruity fragrance and again i'll reach about three and a half foot tall by three and a half foot wide how beautiful 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 this is paired with um, blue angel clematis just up the back there oh by the way olivia rose austin is paired with uh, mrs n thompson which i think was over in uh, one of the pots over there um so that is the poet's wife. Beautiful, beautiful rose. Cannot wait to see this one in bloom and to smell blooms. Um, we had some good blooms from the poet's wife last year, but as it was only its first year, it didn't get very tall. Um, it's already bigger than it was in the height of summer last year. And we're only in April. So yeah, all is looking good so far. So that's the poet's wife. Coming down this bed, we've got some more of those raspberry ripple tulips. It's not called raspberry ripple, but that's what I'm going to call it because I don't know the name of it. Beautiful. And then we come down to another rose, which is another favourite of mine. This is the Ancient Mariner, um, introduced in, I think, 2015 by David Austin. Um, very large, mid-pink cup blooms strong myrrh fragrance reaching about four foot tall by about four foot wide this one was incredible the bloom size was just ginormous absolutely huge um, and the fragrance to match just wow fancy having the ancient mariner right next door to the poet's wife i think i'll just stand in this section for the whole of the summer um, because it's going to be delicious as you can see, look at the soil. This is what I was saying about the drainage. You can see it's still quite damp. We've not really had much rain today. Um, but this rose is loving it. Loving life. Loving where it's placed. I'll get a mulch on top of here to tidy this up. We've got... Um, gosh, the name escapes me of this. It'll come back to me in a second. Grows like a weed lovely tall purple spires pink spires still not coming to me bees love it yeah anyway i'll come back to that in a second toad flax there you go um that's a beautiful plant so we've got a load of this growing around um, the property it grows like a weed as i said because it seeds very readily it's a perennial so it keeps coming back but i just love the blooms and it blooms from early summer all the way through to the first frost so bang for your buck and it, it looks really good intermingled between everything because the foliage is quite airy the 
flower spikes are quite thin but yet lovely colours and the bees go crackers for them so yeah it's a winner in my book um, so that's the Ancient Mariner. Ancient Mariner is paired with nothing because the Clematis, did, the Clematis didn't survive. Um, so that's one that's going to need um, something from the line of Clematis spares that I've got. Don't know who's going to go in there, but we'll see. Um, got some more Queen of the Night tulips coming up there. Can't wait to see those. And then the last rose by no means the least, is another amazing rose. So this is Summer Song. This was introduced by David Austin in 2005. And this rose, wait till you see the picture that I had. Oh God, last year, amazing. I, I don't have any other roses like this. It's got a medium to large size orange red bloom and it really is orange red. Um, strong tea fragrance, reaches about four foot tall by about four foot wide. Um, lovely, lovely rose. Um, reading a lot of the comments on the David Austin um, rose group, a lot of people that have had this over in the States, um, it's not done very well. I don't think it copes super well in either really hot climates or really cold climates. It seems to be just fine here in Hereford, UK, so I'm quite lucky um, because the health of the rose is fantastic. The blooms last year, again, another one of those roses that you just, you see it, and instantly you know which rose it is because there are no others that I know of that look like Summer Song. And the fragrance is, is delicious. It's such a nice fragrance. Um, I get like a passion fruit scent from this one, um, which is just lovely. Absolutely beautiful. Can't wait to do a rose review on this one for you later as well as, as you know, I'm gonna do rose reviews on all of the roses. Um, this rose is paired with uh, Clematis Sylvia Denny in the back, which is a white Clematis and hopefully will look really nice and not steal the show from Summer Song. I've tried to pair all of the roses in Clematis so they complement each other, not either one of them tries to steal the limelight, or although if any are going to do that, I'd rather it was the rose than the Clematis. So that completes the Rose Room tour um, here in April, as you can see. You know, we've got a lot of tulips coming out. There's so much more. I'm going to be doing more rose tours in due course so that over the year you can see how the room changes. But just to give you an idea and to capture it for my sake as well and my interest, because I like to document these things, helps me in future to see what worked well, what maybe didn't work as well. And that'll help me mould the room over the coming years. But I love these quartered sections. I think the willow hoops have worked really, really well so far, and I'm quite excited to see how they, you know, perform this year in terms of supporting the roses, which is, you know, really what I want. Um, and also just designating where the roses are. I've got a specific space through which my roses are going to grow up and out of, so it just keeps them where I want them. But yeah, I'm really, really, really pleased. I hope you've enjoyed this tour. Again, it's another long one. If you've managed to stick on to the end, well done. Um, that's another one of the cherries, by the way, which I've planted just outside of that entrance, which leads to the bottom of the garden. This central circle section here, um, I do have a project that's going in this year. So I'm getting made a beautiful metal rose arch, which will come up on all four corners it'll be open on on all four sides so that you can walk through it and that um, centerpiece is going to be replaced with a I'd like one of those uh, Roman statues um, to go in there so I think that would look quite nice almost a life-size one in marble underneath the arch and then I've got some climbing roses I think I might put Crown Princess Margarita um, on two corners and then I might put Teasing Georgia or another rose. I don't know, I ain't quite decided which climbers are going on, but yeah, they should hopefully tower up and around and over the arch. And it'll just be like the centerpiece really of the rose room, which I think will be really, really nice. I want some detailing on the top, maybe a crown on the top of the um, rose arch. And it means I get to plant another four roses, which is great. I could probably put more roses in here, but We've got other areas of the garden which I'm working on at the minute. Um, 
and there's going to be a lot more roses, different roses to the ones that are in here going in. We've got a lot of retired varieties that are sitting in pots just waiting, dying to go in the ground. Hopefully not dying actually. No, they look like they're doing quite well. Um, but I do, I do want to get them in the sooner the better. Um, so yeah, that's the um, April Rose Room tour. Join me again in May when um, I'll show you what else is going on. Thanks again for watching. Remember, if you've enjoyed this video, support me and the channel. Please like it and um, subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.